So team keep it clean We got some very encouraging But concerning news Regarding all Baltimore Ravens Specifically Kyle Hamilton Now we know Kyle Hamilton uh, In that game against the Rams He left the game Not one but two times And it was declared That he had a grade one MCL sprain So not the best news For Kyle Hamilton But certainly not the worst So leading up into this week John Harbaugh said Oh he has a chance to practice We'll see how it goes And we all just waited So Wednesday came around And they said that Kyle Hamilton was actually out there on the practice field, knee bracing all, doing his thing. He was on a limited basis, but he was still practicing nonetheless. So then Thursday rolled around, and he continued to practice, still on a limited basis, but he was out there doing his thing. So it was like, wow, Kyle Hamilton has actually been practicing the past two days. So then Friday came around. And Friday, his practice participation changed, even though Friday is more so a walkthrough, but still, he went from being practicing on a limited basis to practicing in full. And if somebody practices in full leading up to a game, then nine times out of ten, they'll play. But with Kyle Hamilton, see, for me personally, um, even though he was a full participant in Friday's practice, I would still hold him out. I will still save him for later. Now, I know we want Kyle Hamilton out there. This defense is a much better unit when Kyle Hamilton is on the field. That has been proven time and time again. Kyle Hamilton is an amazing player. Uh, just over these past, it hasn't even been a full two years, but Kyle Hamilton is, is one of the best players on that defense. Um, but he is, is amazing, so it's been nice to see his growth. Uh, but... I just, and this is just my opinion, of course, and I'm no medical expert, even though as a Baltimore Raven fan, I feel like a medical expert, I think it would be best to hold him out. Especially, think about this too, especially, obviously, for the long run of the rest of the season and the long run of the playoffs too, but because the previous two days, he was a limited participant. So in the real practices, he hasn't even practiced in full, and then if he had a brace on, then is he really 100%? I don't know, but for this Jaguars game, even though this is a big game, we got some really big games coming up, and it's funny because a lot of us look at the game that's actually not the biggest game as the biggest game, that being the game against the 49ers, and that's actually the least important game on the schedule for these last four games because, again, they're NFC, Ravens are AFC. The Jags, Dolphins, and Steelers, all AFC, and all fighting for playoff contention, all fighting for playoff spots, uh, as the Baltimore Ravens are just trying to maintain theirs. So with Kyle Hamilton, I, I, it's very encouraging that he was a full participant. It's very encouraging that he was at practice all this week, uh, but I would still hold him out and just save him for the long haul. But again, that's just me. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. And of course, before we get into some more news and a game preview, uh, y'all make sure you subscribe to the channel and, and turn your notifications on uh, and leave a like on the video because when you leave a like on the video, that helps out the channel tremendously. It really, really does. This is a special video. This is sort of my, like my, my, my flu game video uh, because I'm sure y'all could tell by my voice. Y'all can, can hear me. We've been known each other for years. We're family. So we can always tell when something's up. So I, I have fallen a little bit under the weather i ain't got the flu now but i just got a cold or whatnot i feel like jordan right no actually no i don't feel like jordan because jordan didn't have the flu but we talk about something else anyway um some more encouraging news uh, from the baltimore ravens were that um both more both morgan moses and ronnie stanley both were four participants all throughout this week every day so they didn't have friday off again i guess john hope i was like look man hey it worked last week we're going to run it back this week. Y'all ain't getting Friday off. Maybe that's that's probably the real reason why they rotated them uh, the left and right tackles in that game against the Rams. It's probably because Ronnie Stanley and Morgan Moses both practiced the previous Friday, so they were tired. They're like, man, we've been getting all these Fridays off. We trying to chill, coach. You got us out here for a full game? Oh, come on now, man. But anyway, that's a good sign because – Ravens offensive line needs all the practice they can get. They had a good performance overall, especially pass blocking for the most part uh, against the Rams, but it could still be even better. I mean, and that's what practice is for, to continue to get even better. Now, big game against these Jacksonville Jaguars, um, and it should be a really, really fun one, but I'm no Jacksonville Jaguars expert. I mean, I'm really no expert in anything, not even Baltimore Ravens, but... I want to bring somebody on who is an expert and that can tell us how they feel about these Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome, my guy, UCF Jaguars. Keep it clean. What is going on, guys? My name is Dalton from the UCF Jaguar YouTube channel. Really appreciate and Graven for the opportunity 
to come out here and kind of talk a little bit about my Jaguars. Now, the Jaguars are eight and five right now. And, you know, I think we all know with these NFL seasons, there's like it goes up and down, up and down. And the Jaguars start off the year a little bit down. They were one and two. Unfortunate start to the year because we had really high expectations. And the Jaguars messed around and won seven out of their eight, next eight games. And we were talking about number one seed. Like, we got this. You know, we were number one seed for like three hours a couple weeks ago, which was fun. Well, unfortunately, the Jaguars are on a two-game losing streak. So right now, we're just like, okay, let's win the AFC South, move on, and let's host some playoff games, okay? That's kind of our mindset right now. So what's been going wrong with the Jaguars now? The Jaguars, unfortunately, my biggest concern when it comes to like looking forward, like at the Jaguars, like potentially in the playoffs, is the Jaguars have absolutely no run game. I mean, the offensive line just doesn't bully people. Now, granted, we're definitely hurt at the position. One left tackle went down three weeks ago in Cam Robinson. The backup left tackle, uh, Walker Little, went down two weeks ago. And last week, the third string left tackle with Ezra Cleveland, who moved out the left tackle, got hurt. So, no idea who the left tackle is going to be this game. Maybe Walker, Walker Little and Ezra Cleveland might come back. We'll see. But we're hurt at that. Our number one run blocking tight end has been hurt. So it's just been it's been so bad where the Jaguars on third on third and one last game at their own 25 yard line decided to instead of run the ball for a yard to pick up the first down, they went empty backfield and went deep. OK, the Jaguars completely abandoned the run game. Nothing between the tackles, just outside runs. So the Jaguars are going to need to really establish a pass game okay the pass game is going to need to help set up the run game this game or else if the jowers go down early it's going to be hard for us to recover so with the jags offense trevor lawrence needs to be on point it's been it's really hurt us not having christian kirk him and evan ingram are, are, are by far the most reliable guys for trevor lawrence while you know they're always on the same page while it seems like zay jones and the Calvin really are not on the same page, but hey, maybe this is a game where Zay Jones can get back going because for some reason he plays really good against the Ravens. Okay, so maybe he can come back and play well this game. Maybe maybe all he needs is the Ravens to get back on it. Okay, maybe that that's what he needs. So yeah, the Jaguars love Trevor Lawrence. Like maybe not the best game last week, but he's just a good quarterback. Okay, given the opportunity, he can play really really well. So. With the with the defense now, the defense has not been good the last couple of games, and look, the Jaguars. Josh Allen having a career year. He is a game wrecker. Foye Luke at linebacker is really good. But outside of that, the Jaguars really don't have a lot of like elite, elite players. But what the Jaguars defense did well the first half of the year is that they just play really disciplined football and they, they play to their assignments and everything has been good. But the last couple of weeks, giving up like 28 plus points um, each of the games, it has been just because the defense has been just not doing their assignments. We've had safeties trying to tackle with their shoulder pad. We've had guys go down, like nickel cornerback goes down, outside cornerback goes down. Safeties, each of the safeties went down at some point. So it's just been a little bit of attrition going on with the Jaguars. And look, the Jaguars have a – look, their back's against the wall right now. You know, there's no reason for them to come out flat this game. And – the the Jaguars a couple weeks ago had an opportunity on our first Monday night football game in 12 years to show the world, hey, we're good. We're out here. We are the Jaguars Duval till we die. But they ruined it. Now the Jaguars have their first Sunday night football game in 15 years. Can we do something with it? Are we going to come out flat? We'll see. Look, we're on a two-game losing streak to the AFC North. We got to beat somebody, okay? We already beat the Steelers, so I'm looking to split. I'm happy with two and two. So we'll see with this game. I don't really know what to expect. Um, like, I love the offense. Don't really love the defense right now. It's just, we've seen the Jowers play well. It's just coaching needs to get these guys on the same page. Trevor Lawrence and the defense, they need to have the communication stuff right. And, you know, I'm glad we're maybe in a slump at this point because I would hate to be on a two-game losing streak going into the playoffs. So after this, they got three losing teams. So time to get right. Okay, time to get right. We're a heavy favorite to go into the playoffs. So let's do this. So let's do this. Hopefully the Jowers win. But that's all I got for you. Thank you, Engraven and Team Keep It Clean for having me on here. You guys can find me on YouTube, UCF Jaguar. And good luck this Sunday. May the best team win. Go Jaguars. So you heard it directly from UCF Jaguar. And we're going to see exactly how this game goes tomorrow. It should be a really, really good one again. My score prediction was Baltimore Ravens 31, Jacksonville Jaguars 23. 
Uh, but we'll see how it all ends up shaking out. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for supporting. And now I am going to go get some more rest. <laughs>